Since the 1930s, Indian Town had become the gateway to the citrus growing industry in Martin County. For the families of the county's early citrus farmers, as well as for large corporations that followed them, Indian Town provided the ideal weather, unlimited land acreage, good soil, and more importantly, access to the St. Lucie Canal for water irrigation and drainage that was necessary for citrus production. Rhonda met Bill Owens in the first grade at Palm Beach Public School. They got together again in high school and then several years later married in 1949. I met Bill in Palm Beach Public School in the first grade and then we went to high school, uh, then we got together again in high school and then we went together for years and married in 1949. The Owens family came to Indian Town in the 1930s and they had a grove which was west of Indian Town. We came to Indian Town, the Owens family did, in 1930s they had a grove and then in 1943 they bought Owens Grove. Bill and I got there because we were finished with college and didn't know what we were going to do, so temporarily we moved to Indian Town in the Cracker House, and we're 50 years later, still there, not living there all the time. When Bill and Rhonda moved to Indian Town, the Bowers Grove was in operation at that time. When we moved to Indian Town, the Bowers Yes, the Bowers Grove was in operation at that, that time. The first grove was west of Indian Town, and they would go there on weekends and whatever. The Owens family bought one half of it, which is about 130 acres, I believe. The Seminole Indians had lived in Indian Town many years ago, and they camped on the Bowers property, which later became part of the Owens Grove property. The Seminole Indians were not living in Indian Town when we moved there, but they had been, and they had camped at one time on the Owens Grove property, the part that we had. Rhonda considered herself a pioneer when she ventured out with her husband to Indian Town from Palm Beach to work their citrus grove. She knew nothing at all about farming. Moving from Palm Beach to Indian Town was a sticker shock, but it was great fun. And um, my husband had worked in the summers there, helping his dad pick the fruit and, and taking it into Palm Beach to sell to the little stores in there. And uh, so he knew what it was all about. Plus, they had a farm in, North, in um, Georgia. And so he, was, he knew farming, but I didn't know anything about it, but it was great fun, a big experience. I thought I was a pioneer. The Cracker House, as we called it, was there, had been there, and it had not a stick of paint on it, inside or outside, and you had to step on a piece of uh, concrete block to get up into the front door. It was a little primitive, but um, yes, it was, it was there when we were when, when we moved there. The Cracker House had the basic necessities for a shelter. When we lived at the Cracker House, it was very, very basic. Um, <laughs> we did have indoor plumbing there. We had uh, electricity part of the time. Uh, of course, it would go off, and then we'd have to go outside and build a fire and finish cooking our dinner on the ground. <laughs> but but, but um, know that we had screens on the windows to keep out the mosquitoes, and, but it was very, very hot because of tin roof and no uh, fans or anything in the hot summer. So my, my brother-in-law was living with us and we were so hot, so we, he went up on the roof and he chopped a big hole in the tin roof so the heat could escape from, from the attic. My father-in-law was not very happy with us doing that to his house, but we were a lot cooler. We were isolated a, a bit there in Indian Town, and so when we had to shop, we did, well, doctors and that sort of thing, we went back to Palm Beach but we also did our grocery shopping over in Stewart. That's how we became acquainted with Stewart. And we were, lived at Indian Town at that point. That was our first period there in 1950, 1950 to 1952. 
Florida native Jack Norris grew up on a citrus and cattle operation in Central Florida. After college in 1961, he went to work for the Minute Maid Corporation, where he was sent to Indian Town to oversee the corporation's citrus development on their newly purchased land. I'm a native Floridian, born in Tampa, and in about when I was about 10 years old, moved to Central Florida near Mount Dora, where I uh, grew up on a citrus and cattle operation. Uh, I worked there, like I say, until it was time to uh, go to school, go away to college. I went to the University of Florida, majored in agriculture at, at Florida, and then uh, after a little term in the army, I. Uh, Went to work for uh, Minute Maid, Minute Maid Groves Corporation at that time, which was later purchased by the Coca-Cola Company, and uh, stayed with them for about uh, 26 years. Florida native Ron Hathaway grew up in Martin County, where he worked for his dad from 1963 to 1965, developing citrus groves. I was born in Martin County. I went to the old Stewart High School I was in the military from 1960 to 63. I worked for my dad from 1963 to 65, developing citrus groves. 1965, I went to work for Calkins. I worked for them till 1988. At, at different times, I was a grove supervisor, harvesting manager, production manager. And in 1988, they sold to a French conglomerate via Tropical. I worked for them to 1988 to 1997 and at that time I went back to work for Calkins family that had a, uh, one grove of 3,000 acres and I worked for them till the present time. Minute Maid sent Jack to Indian Town in 1961 to develop and plant their 3,600 acres of citrus groves. During his stay in Indian Town, he lived at the Seminole End. I really came to Indian Town, and it was in January of 1961. I had been with the Coca-Cola Company, Minute Maid, for about two years at that time, and they were expanding their uh, acreage in South Florida substantially and had purchased 3,600 acres of land uh, from the uh, GC Troop uh, Company. And I was sent there to develop that and plant that 3,600 acres. Indian Town was a fascinating place for me at that time, uh, particularly having grown up in a rural area, I really appreciated Indian Town. Uh, one of the more interesting things about being in Indian Town, um, I lived in the Seminole Inn out there for about two years. And that was quite an experience. Um, it was a fascinating experience. I saw and met more people from all walks of life during that period of time. When Bill Owen started producing citrus, he didn't have much experience in citrus farming. His business degree wasn't much help for growing citrus, so he had to learn from his father. Uh, uh, involved in citrus, yes mainly because he really didn't care about riding horses or chasing cattle. We did had to do it a while, but that soon ended in a few years. And so we did um, the citrus, and he didn't know. He knew only what he had learned from experience from his father. And so he had no, his background at college was business education. So he had no knowledge of growing citrus except through his experience and his father's guidance. The two main reasons why the citrus industry moved to Indian Town were the need for available land and more importantly, access to the St. Lucie River. The reason, really the reason for, it, uh, for the citrus industry moving to that part of the state was the need for additional acreage the availability of good soil, land, for citrus uh, production, and I think most importantly, the access to the St. Lucie Canal, uh, because that furnished the irrigation that was necessary, water for irrigation, and it also uh, furnished the drainage needs for, the, for citrus. 
And that was uh, a lot of, there were a lot of companies that came to Indian Town during that period of time. We were not the first, but we came in, like I say, in 61. Others had come in in the 50s, and some came in later in the 60s with substantial acreage being planted. And I, as I say, I think largely due to the St. Lucie Canal. One of the first citrus growers in Indian Town was Joe Bowers. And then others came like Bill Owens, the Calkins Company, and Minute Maid Corporation. The first people, I think, to actually raise citrus in Indian Town were the Joe Bowers. Um, Bill Owens also raised some citrus, and about the time that Calkins came, Minute Maid also came. Some of the earlier companies, larger companies that come in, included Bessemer, and I don't know exactly when they came into play. They had properties initially at Port Mayaka, and um, the Calkins people came in probably in the mid-60s, early to mid-60s. Uh, Howard, Howard family out of Orlando planted acreage back in the 50s. Alcoma planted acreage in the 50s. H.P. Uh, Hood had a significant acreage. They're the dairy company out of the north and uh, they had significant acreage there. And I think it all totaled up eventually to somewhere around 45,000 acres that were planted in, in Martin County. For Rhonda and Bill Owens, their irrigation began with flooding water between the citrus trees, a watering sprinkler system, and then emitters. Our irrigation uh, began with, uh, I think, flooding between the trees and then uh, eventually we um, had s uh, sprinklers and then finally to those emitters in the end after we, my son got in the business. But um, our water, we had a big pump down at the spillway, but I think it drained out of um, Roland Canal, Roland Ditch. I don't believe it drew out straight out of the canal. Calkins came to Indian Town to raise citrus because of the temperature of the weather and the availability of water for irrigation practices. Our irrigation was a major factor, and again, that's why one reason why we purchased on the St. Lucie Canal. We had a pumping station on the St. Lucie that pumped water back about three and a half or four miles back into the grove. And uh, our, what we had was what we called then a four-row bed, where we had four rows of trees on a 135-foot bed with a ditch on each side. And we would uh, raise the water levels in those ditches and then pump it out with a portable overhead um, volume uh, irrigation gun and uh, to cover the, the, uh, the acreage that had to be covered. That was later done away with, and uh, a overhead sprinkler system was installed on all of the acreage. And uh, it worked substantially better than the other. Bill Owens, with a few helpers, worked the citrus field as well as harvesting the citrus off the trees. Our labor uh, uh, at the Grove was, um, my husband did a lot, but even when we first started and moved out there to do it, my father-in-law had people working there, and so we had uh, two employees when we started who helped us, and um, through the years we had more. But my husband and that one helper did the pick the oranges. I, and I'd have to say that labor was one of the major challenges we had. We had a very uh, short labor supply, and this was at a time Prior to herbicides and other uh, production issues that required a lot of labor, I traveled all over the southeast initially trying to recruit labor uh, out there with not a lot of success. Um, we managed to get by and uh, during the, oh probably early to mid 60s, the Mexicans started uh, arriving in Indian Town. And uh, the labor force uh, improved substantially in numbers. We had people that were there and willing to work, and uh, they, be they became a very vital part of, uh, of what we were doing out there. The silic insect was a serious problem for the citrus growers because it killed the trees. 
Uh, most of the reasons that we had problems in those days started with this silic insect that caused the uh, trees to die. There was a lot we did not know about at that time. And then there was a, a spraying machine that was an old truck that had a big wooden tub and you filled it from the top and then it had a couple of hoses coming out the side and then my husband and whoever else would walk behind the truck with these hoses and spray the trees. That's how we took care of the bugs. Another challenge for Minute Maid was weed control. In the days before herbicides, weeds were controlled by hand labor and mowing equipment. By the late 1960s, herbicides became available and it made a great difference for the health and growth of the trees. One of the problems that we had early on, uh, and I mentioned the need for labor, was weed control. And uh, back in those days, there were herbicides were not uh, available, and uh, so all the uh, weed control had to be done by hand labor and or uh, mowing equipment. And uh, it did require an awful lot of labor to keep uh, the young trees free of weeds. Uh, herbicides came into play, oh, I'd forgotten just when, maybe in the mid-60s, late-60s, and uh, substantially reduced the need for uh, the labor out there, and, uh, did, and, and it made a big difference in the production levels, of the growth of the trees, and the condition of the trees as time went by. Um, when we first started at the Grove, our equipment situation was a little meager. Uh, my father-in-law had a little old tractor. I have no idea how old it was, but it, it, it's an antique now, I think. And he used that tractor mowing between the trees. We had to mow and keep the weeds and things down. Freezing weather was a problem in 1977, 1982, and 1985. Most of the problems we had in those days was caused by freezes. Uh, 1977, we had a freeze. 1983, 85. Well, my, my job uh, with Minute Maid was to develop and plant the initial 3,600 acres, which, uh, which we did, and, uh, and got underway with the clearing and the, the preparation in 1961. A few years later, they acquired a, an additional 4,300 acres adjacent to the 3,600 and the decision was made to plant lemons on that, uh, that 3,600, on the 4,300 acres. And uh, so we wound up with, a, with roughly 4,000 acres of lemons, which was uh, quite unusual in the state of Florida. I think by far it was the first time any significant acreage of lemons had been planted. And uh, everything went well until we had a freeze in 1982 and the lemons were all killed, <laughs> so. <laughs> For many years, harvesting was done by hand, off of ladders, and manually put the fruit into containers, and then hauled by a semi-trailer to Minute Maid's various processing plants. Harvesting was a, uh, really not much different in Indian Town than it had been in the industry for many, many years. It was uh, done by hand, and uh, it was people worked off of ladders and put them in, put the fruit into containers. The containers were picked up and loaded into a, a narrow-bodied truck in the, and carried out and then lifted in, and uh, put into a semi-trailer where it was hauled to the various plants or locations. When we first started, my father-in-law had contacts with gift fruit shippers in Palm Beach County and we would take the fruit over there at first. Then he also, my father-in-law, built uh, a fruit stand. We hauled and s sold our fruit fresh there. Uh, as to where we sold the crop, like I say, we were owned by uh, Minute Maid. It was Minute Maid uh, Corporation with their plants, processing plants in Leesburg and Auburndale. And all of our processing fruit went to those two plants. Early on, our, the fresh fruit that we raised went to a fresh fruit packing house owned by the company in Orlando, which was later closed. And then we started selling fresh fruit to local buyers and whoever they might be. We had some visitors come 
from, they were from New York State, and they came out, they found out we were there, came out and wanted us to ship some fruit for them, and we didn't know anything about shipping fruit. And so, well, we found out you could go up to Mr. Hathaway's store and you could get these little fruit baskets. And, and so we got that. And then uh, to wash the fruit, we just washed it in the backyard and, and wiped it off with some old towels and packed it in these baskets and then wired them shut. And I wrote the name on the top and we shipped it to the men in New York. Pretty soon we were in the shipping business. Then we had to have a washing machine, citrus washing machine, which we set up in the uh, shed behind our house. And it, it actually it moved over to the packing house later on. And that's the only one we've ever had. And it's so, antique. The reason for the, the planting basically of oranges initially was for processing for concentrate, orange juice concentrate. Uh, Minute Maid owned two processing plants at the time, one in Leesburg and one in Auburndale. And, uh, and they also had a fresh fruit packing house near Orlando. And uh, so the primary purpose of the, of the planting and the production was to produce uh, fruit for, pro for concentrate, but was also a fresh fruit operation, particularly when we got into the lemon industry and planted lemons, that because the lemons were strictly to be a fresh fruit product, although the eliminations all went into processing to concentrate. But um, the, the lemons uh, were a major part of our operation out there for a number of years until, like I said, the 1983 uh, took them out. Um, the first few years, 1972, we started building our own juice plant. Up till that time, we shipped fruit as far as Umatilla to a company called Golden Gem, uh, to Bradenton, Florida, to Tropicana, and some to uh, Fort Pierce in a plant called Tree Sweet. Bill Owens and I had, were working this business and um, we were, he would try to sell it in every possible way he could sell it. In 1952, we had moved over to Stewart, be able to sell fruit to different grocery stores, and one of them being Kindred's, our old standby in Stewart. The citrus industry started to decline in 2002 or 2003. I'd like to talk a little bit about the condition of the industry right now. And like I say, I've been out of the industry for 13, 14 years, not actively involved. I try to keep up with what happens. The industry is uh, suffering greatly from a disease locally, locally known as greening. It's a, uh, and uh, the greening is devastating to the, uh, it's a virus and uh, devastating to the industry as a whole. And not just in Florida, it is worldwide. Uh, there's desperate efforts to find a solution to the problem that has not happened. Martin County, I think, at one time had close to 45,000 45, acres of citrus. If, they, if there's any commercial operations left in the county, I do not, I do not know where it is or what it is. Um, the state of Florida had over 800,000 acres of citrus, and I believe it's down to well under 500,000 today for the, for the same reason all because of this disease. Wishful and hopeful that uh, a cure can be found. Today, uh, Calkins have, we have uh, three farmers that are farming different crops like uh, cabbage, lettuce, different kinds of lettuce, spinach, beans, corn. Uh, as to why Minute Maid got out of the business, I can't say precisely because I had been, I had been away from the company for about four years at the time. And um, I suspect it had a lot to do with labor issues and the need possibly just to get out of that type of line of work and concentrate on their marketing and sales operations. In the future, most of the citrus ate in the United States or drank will come from Brazil. Within the next two decades, Florida's agricultural lands will change and transition to younger farmers and newer techniques. And although the new future for the world has technologically rapidly altering the old farming methods and skills of the past, Martin County's warm thermal belt climate and mineral soils will continue to offer a natural agricultural advantage. 
But the intimacy and dedication of the old family farm will always be an essential piece to Martin County's history.